If you've enjoyed a couple of my videos, why not subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you see new videos as soon as they're available. Hi there everyone, today we are going to be taking a detailed look at a load of different motors from Flyfish. Now Flyfish are a relatively new company in FPV and they have a whole range of 5 inch motors. They have a 2506, a 2406, a 2306 and a 2207 and all of these motors come in different KVs. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you through all of these motors on the bench and testing them on my thrust test stand. And we're going to be using the results of those tests to figure out what all of these different motors are for, which ones you should pick and which ones you should avoid. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. All right, let's start by taking a look at these motors on the bench. Here we have the Flyfish Flash motors, the 2506, 2406, 2306, and 2207 sizes. And as you can probably see immediately, there are a lot more similarities than differences between all these motors. So I'm gonna talk you through the features of this 2306, but everything that I'm about to say applies to all of these different Flyfish flash motors. The motors have a unibel design, which means that there is a single piece of aluminum that extends all the way from the shaft up at the top here, all the way down over the flux ring. And that, provides a little bit of additional durability, helps provide some uh, surface area to bond the steel flux ring into the motor and reduces the chance that the flux ring is gonna slide down in a crash, which is called a, a dropped bell. And that is something that we do sometimes see, uh, but not usually with unibel designs. If I turn the motor over and come to the base, we can see we've got quite a simple base design with a feature here to hold the, uh, the power cable for the motor. The bearings here are nine millimeter by four millimeter NMB bearings, and the uh, shaft screw is an M3 shaft screw, which is nice to see. That's pretty standard now on motors of this size, and it just makes it that little bit easier to take the motor apart if you ever do need to replace the bell. The windings of the motor are single strand windings, and let's take the bell off so we can see these a little bit better. Once I've removed the rotor, we can look at the internal construction. The M3 shaft screw is held in with some Loctite, and you can see that there is a little o-ring down inside there and a washer to cushion the top bearing in a crash and just help that top bearing run a little smoother that's a feature that we see on pretty much all premium motors nowadays so it's good that flyfish have included it there is evidence of balancing compound in between some of these magnets so i think we can be confident that this motor has been balanced at the factory and so it's going to run and spin nice and smoothly if we take a look at the stator now we have a single core windings as i said before and i can tell you that the insulation on these wires is rated for 220 degrees c so it's not quite as high as what we see from someone like rcm power they got to 260 degrees centigrade but it's still likely to be a very smoke resistant motor moving on now to look at the flyfish sword 2207 we can see that this motor is of a bit of a different design we have a two-piece bell design for this motor that means the aluminium part of the bell doesn't extend down over the flux ring and you can actually see a break quite clearly on this motor between the aluminium top part of the bell and the steel flux ring here. Now, while this can have an effect on durability because there is a risk that uh, these two parts might separate in a hard crash, the benefit of it is you save about a gram of weight overall on the motor by moving to this design from a unibel design. The rest of the design of the motor is very very similar to the flash motor we have a very similar base although this motor doesn't have any feature to retain the power cable um, not that i think that matters particularly because these power cables don't tend to move around at all we have the same nine by four millimeter nmb bearing and the same single core winding this motor is clearly designed for applications where maximum power to weight ratio is important where you want to save every gram of weight and that's, that's typical for racing applications. And we can see that it also has a higher KV, uh, 1950 KV, than we see on some of the other versions of the flash motor, which again sort of points towards uh, that higher performance racing type application. If we take the Sword 2207 apart, we can see that apart from the fact this is a two-piece bell, everything else has the same construction as the flash motor. We've got that little O-ring to cushion the top bearing. We've got the M3 shaft screw lock tighted in. We've got the N52SH high strength magnets. And if we move over to look at the stator, the same 9x4 NMB bearing, um, the same single core winding with 220 degrees C insulation, 
uh, all very much as you'd expect. The only real difference is that the sword motor doesn't have a little feature to hang on to the power cable, but honestly, when you attach these motors to the arm of a quad and put a bit of tape around the wire, um, I don't think you really need that feature to keep that wire in place. This is quite a, quite a stiff construction already. Looking at these Flyfish motors on the bench, we can see that they have a modern design and construction with all the features that we'd expect of a good 5-inch motor. But to see how these motors compare, all the different sizes, and to see how they stack up to other 5-inch motors, we're going to have to look at the thrust test data. Before we dive into the test data, I want to take a moment to thank all of my patrons whose support makes detailed scientific testing like this possible. If you'd like to join us and get early access to new AOS products, as well as the raw data from all of the product testing I've done thus far, then you can join for less than the price of a cup of coffee, and there are links down in the video description. I sure would appreciate any support that you can give. All right, so now it's time to look at the thrust test data. And of course, I want to show you how all of these different motors perform, but I also want to show you more fundamentally that this is kind of an illusion of choice. All of these different sizes and KVs either don't perform very differently from each other, or are fundamentally just inferior to another size and KV that's available. So let me take you through this step by step. Let's start by looking at measured KV. And I test this by running the motor full throttle without a prop at 10 volts, and then dividing the RPM by 10 to give the KV in RPM per volt. When we look at the results for measured KV, we see that all of the 2207 motors from Flyfish test out at a very similar KV. The 1850, 1950, and 2005 KV versions all test out between 1810 and 1885 KV. There's really not much variation there. And because these motors are the same size and they have the same construction, the fact they have the same KV means they all pretty much perform the same. So much so that I would say that either you could buy any of these motors, or really I would just buy the 2207, 2005 KV version because it's the one that performs slightly better than the rest, but they're all so similar that honestly, it doesn't really matter which one of the 2207 motors you pick. When we look at the 2306, we got a much bigger variation in KV because there's a uh, 4S version of this motor as well, which I did test on 4S. The 2406 has uh, two versions with pretty different KV and again, more similar to uh, like a five inch KV. And then the 2506 motors both have a lower KV. So perhaps they're designed for larger prop like a six inch prop or in the case of the 1550 kv version you could even consider running that on 8s the next graph we're going to look at is a thrust versus throttle plot i collect this data by ramping the motor from 10 to 100 percent throttle on my standard hq5 by 4.5 by 3 test prop i measure the electrical power the torque the rpm and the thrust generated by the motor to produce this and a whole bunch of different plots when we look at the results from this test, we see again that there are a load of motors that are very, very similar. All of the 2207 and 2406 motors perform very, very similarly, with any difference in their performance basically being due only to KV. So the 1950 KV 2406 performs a little bit better, produces a bit more thrust than most of the 2207s, but only because it's wound to a higher KV. It's not that there's a difference due to the size of the motor. Again, this is sort of the illusion of choice that we're seeing here. You think, oh, I've got a 2406 or a 2207, and you don't realize that these motors basically perform the same, and you can pick either one and you probably wouldn't feel any difference. When we look at the other sizes, like the 2306 and the 2506, they both produce less thrust at every throttle setting. The 2306, because it's got a smaller stator size, and actually it's wound to a lower KV, and the 2506 because even with that larger stator, its lower KV reduces its performance further. That 2506 is gonna be better on maybe 8S, or it's better designed for maybe a six inch prop rather than a five inch prop. It's worth noting as well that the 4S version of the 2306, when tested on 4S, delivers significantly less performance than the 6S 2306 run on 6S. And this is something that I see across all of my testing. In general, 4S motors have significantly lower performance than 6S motors just due to um, the kind of inherent efficiency advantage of 6S. Speaking quickly to efficiency, all of these motors have very similar efficiencies with the efficiency being mainly dependent on KV. The 1950 KV 2406 has the lowest efficiency because it's got the highest KV. And the 2506, 1750, and 1550 KV motors have the best efficiency, mainly because they've just got the lowest wound KV. I measure motor torque using a flywheel dyno test. 
Here, the motor is asked to accelerate a flywheel of a known inertia from 5,000 to 20,000 RPM. And how quickly it's able to do that and how much torque it's able to generate during that acceleration gives us these torque versus RPM curves. Looking at these torque RPM curves was the most interesting part of the testing for me. Because the 2207, 2406 and 2506 motors all had really similar amounts of peak torque with the amount of torque they generated at high RPMs basically being dependent on the wound KV. And what's so interesting about this is that it just simply shouldn't be this way. To show you what I mean, I've made this graph of torque versus stator volume for these different Flyfish flash motors. And what we can see is that although there is a trend that a larger stator gives you more torque, so more stator volume gives more torque, we see that between the 2207 and the 2406, even though the stator volume goes up, the torque production actually goes down. And the 2506, despite being quite a bit bigger than a 2207, barely makes any more torque than it at all. So what's going on here and what's causing this difference in performance? Fundamentally, I think this all comes down to edge effects. Whenever you have a radial motor, some of the magnetic field is going to escape at the top and the bottom of the air gap. And that's going to mean that the top and bottom edge of the motor are going to produce less torque than you might expect. Now, if you have a very tall motor, that effect is going to be pretty small because you've got a big height of motor and then a little bit of edge at the top and bottom that's affected. However, if you have a very flat motor, like a pancake motor, then that edge, the top and the bottom edge, are actually a big proportion of the total height of the motor. And so you lose a lot of torque due to those edge effects. When we compare a 2207 to a 2406, even though the 2406 has more volume, because it's a flatter motor, that edge effect is pronounced, and that means that it overall is not able to generate as much torque as a 2207. The 2506, again, it's still got that same edge effect, but now we're seeing that making the motor even wider, even more volume, it's able to generate more torque, but not that much more than a 2207, and certainly not as much as we would expect from the extra volume. Managing these edge effects is actually a really important design consideration that I think a lot of motor manufacturers are missing out on. If you look at my AOS Supernova 2207 motor, you'll see that there's actually rotor overhang to handle the edge effects and try and capture as much of the field from the top and bottom of the air gap as possible. Flyfish aren't doing that with these motors and the result is that the 2207 is performing as well or better than their larger diameter stators. Motor torque often translates into motor responsiveness, but with responsiveness, we also have to consider the inertia of the motor bell as well. I measure motor responsiveness by accelerating a 5 by 4.5 by 3 test prop from 10 to 50% and back to 10% throttle and measure the rate of acceleration and deceleration that the motor is able to achieve. If we look at the results for motor responsiveness, we can see that the 2207 motors do really well as does the 2406 with the high KV. Now, winding a motor with a high KV helps with responsiveness because it increases the motor torque at high RPMs. If we look at the 2306, the 2406 with the more moderate KV, and the 2506 motors, we see that they all are less responsive than the 2207s. And that's because when you make a motor wide and flat, that reduces the amount of torque that it's able to generate compared to the inertia of the motor bell in most cases and also because they're wound with a lower KV, which reduces the amount of torque they have at high RPMs. The final parameter to look at is weight. And weight is really where we see the negative consequences of these edge effects, because we know that the 2406 and the 2506 motors don't provide significantly more performance than the 2207, but they do weigh quite a bit more. So if you're putting that weight on the ends of the arms, that's gonna have a negative consequence on the flight performance of the quad without giving you a commensurate increase in performance. The 1950 KV 2406 might be interesting here because the higher KV does give it a little bit of an advantage, but you'd be able to achieve that with a higher KV 2207 as well. If we look at the 2306, again, we're seeing a big loss in performance without a commensurate big decrease in weight. So the weight to performance ratio is going to be best for the 2207 2005 KV from Flyfish. And that's what I'd recommend for 99% of pilots who are trying to choose between all of these different motors. The 2506 1550 KV remains interesting, but only if you want to run 8S. 
And that's because the KV is kind of right for 8S. If you're running 6S, you're much better off choosing the 2207. So it's time to sum up. And overall, I think that Flyfish have made a whole range here of well-designed and well-constructed motors. They have all the features you'd expect from a modern 5-inch motor, and the quality seems to be there. But honestly, I think the main problem is there are just too many options that are all too similar to each other. I keep coming back to the 2207-2005 KV, which offers the best performance per weight, and has performance that's so similar to the 2406 and the 2506 options that I would just pick that one because it's overall the best performer. If you're really interested in running 8S, then the 2506 1550 KV might be interesting to you just because it's got the right KV for 8S, not because it offers much improvement in performance over a 2207. So that's one to consider as well. And the 2406 1950 KV, if you're just looking for the maximum possible performance, because it's wound to a higher KV, it achieves that. But overall, these other sizes, the 2306, 2406, and 2506, don't really offer anything in terms of a performance advantage over the standard 2207. So the only differences that you're seeing is just the KV. If you think these Flyfish motors might be for you, then I've put some links down in the video description to the versions that I recommend. And they are affiliate links, which means if you follow them, it helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.